Hello, I'm Donald McCauley from BJGP. Today I'm talking to Dr. Nick Hopkinson, a respiratory physician from the Royal Brompton. Nick, the first thing I'd like to ask you is this suggestion that we sometimes see in the newspapers that smoking could be protective against COVID. It's a really interesting and exciting idea, but uh, it basically doesn't, doesn't hold up. Um, so there were, uh, th there is uh, uh, something observed in um, some of the, the early uh, papers around this showing that in, uh, in, in uh, hospitalized populations, the, the, the rate of smoking seemed to be quite low. But I think now enough data is accumulated that we can really um, dismiss the idea that smoking is, is protective against, uh, against COVID-19 and particularly against getting severe uh, COVID-19, which is what everyone you know, worries about. So, um, so the first thing is, is just looking at, at the population. So the um, data from the, the, the ZOE uh, COVID symptom uh, survey app uh, that was published a few weeks ago showed that current smokers in the population were actually more likely, about 1.2 uh, times more likely to develop COVID based on, on symptoms. So, so during the pandemic, they were, they were more likely to develop uh, fever with cough and, and, and breathlessness than the non-smokers. The second is the, the open safely data, uh, which shows that smokers uh, are just adjusted for age and sex are uh, 1.25 times more likely to, um, to die in hospital. The third thing in terms of severity is uh, a paper in the New England Journal of Medicine um, a week or two ago, which looked at, uh, for multiple hospitals uh, across the world, um, with 8,900 uh, people in it, and that showed that current smokers uh, were 1.8 times uh, as likely to die as, as uh, non-smokers or ex-smokers. So the, the, the idea that, that, that smoking is protective for COVID just doesn't, doesn't hold water. Tell me a little bit about how patients with asthma fare with COVID-19 and whether they should continue taking steroids or what are the risks with steroids? Well, I think we're still, um, we're still learning about uh, who, who is particularly vulnerable, how different groups are affected. Um, I think there are, there are some things that we that we can be fairly confident about. So in the ISRIC data set from the UK, which looks at people admitted to hospital, um, lung disease is overrepresented. So that so 14% of people admitted have uh, a diagnosis of asthma. 19% have got a diagnosis of chronic lung disease, not asthma. So I know this together. It's about a third of people admitted to hospital with COVID have got have got lung disease. Um, in terms of treatment, I think that you know the recommendations are pretty clear to, to 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 carry on, and the thing to be focusing on with asthma is 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 optimizing control. Many of us have spent the last six weeks indoors, confined indoors with our family. L let me ask you a question: As the medical director of Ash, surely passive smoking is a problem. I think there was some recent research. Yes, so there's I mean there's a, a, a YouGov survey looking at this that um, shows that. Uh, in fact, in, in, in households where there are children, um, they're, they're, th those households are more likely to report, or people living in those households are more likely to re report an increase in exposure to passive smoke um, than, than households without out children. So, uh, you know, it, it's, un it's understandable if people are, are confined at home that um, some of them will, 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 will smoke indoors. So I think obviously the, the, the message is to encourage people to smoke outside if they can. But sort of more importantly, we know that that a lot of people, um, you know, are, are rightly anxious about the combination of smoking and, and, and COVID, and are, and are planning to try to quit because of that. And I think our, our job as you know people in a healthcare system is to try and give them the best support that they can. Today, I've been talking to Dr. Nick Hopkinson, who is a consultant physician at the Royal Brompton Hospital, but also medical director of Ash. Thank you very much, Nick. No, it's a pleasure.